Next, let's go further on subtopic 2.3, which is about Hess law. Okay, guys, so here's the learning outcomes for 2.3. By the end of the lesson, you should know how to state Hess law. Apply Hess law to calculate enthalpy changes by using the algebraic method and the energy cycle method. And lastly, illustrate the dissolution process of ionic solids. Hess law was invented by a Russian chemist here. Okay, so dia cakap bila reaktor ni nak convert pada products, the total enthalpy change and delta H actually sama je. Okay, whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps. Enthalpy change ataupun delta H ni during a chemical reaction is actually independent of the route by which chemical change occurs. Okay, so if you look at here, if let's say this is reactant, this is product. Uh, contohnya ada dua orang hikers. Okay, untuk sampai ke puncak, dia orang ambil different paths. But then, dia orang punya potential energy still considered the same. Although that they took the different paths, okay. Uh, so, this is the Hess law punya energy cycle that I'm going to show you next. Previously, kita ada belajar macam mana nak cari enthalpy change through a calorie meter where delta H will be equals to Q reaction, heat release by direction, bahagikan dengan number of mole. Uh, and the number of mole tu akan ikut according to the enthalpy change yang diminta lah. Okay, tapi kalau let's say to find ataupun calculate enthalpy change of directions yang terlampau difficult to carry out directly in a calorimeter, makanya you bolehlah gunakan Hess law. Okay, and then there's two method uh, to to apply the Hess law. The first one is algebraic method. Uh, ni macam senang sikit actually. Yang kedua ialah energy cycle method. Okay, so given the following reactions and their enthalpy changes accordingly, uh, the question asks you to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. Okay, so if let's say you dapat this kind of chemical reaction, please make the above equation, this equation lah, okay, as your target equation. So please make this equation as your target equation. Tapi apa guna chemical equation atas-atas banyak-banyak ni? Ah, don't worry. Okay, so you can just label out this one as enthalpy change yang pertama. Okay, this one enthalpy change yang kedua and this one ialah enthalpy change yang ketiga. So, I would like to go through the first solution uh, in applying the Hess law which is algebraic method. Okay, so the first step, you tulis dulu you punya target thermochemical equation. How do you know your target thermochemical equation? Ialah thermochemical equation yang you nak cari dia punya enthalpy change. Okay, and then next you try to relatekan the, the target thermochemical equation dengan equation yang diberi di dalam soalan. Memang ada tiga, tapi you cuba relatekan dengan uh, thermochemical equation of your target yang sedia ada. Sekarang ni, first of all, miss nak kamu tengok carbon. Okay, so carbon, you cari dekat tiga-tiga thermochemical equation ni, mana satu yang ada carbon? Ha, thermochemical equation yang kedua. So, sekarang ni you tengok, oh ni ada dua, ni ada satu C, tak apa. Sekarang ni you nak kena make sure the position of the carbon kena selari dengan uh, position of carbon of your target thermochemical equation which the carbon should be in the reactant. Next. Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen in gas phase ni should be in reactant. So, you tengok antara ketiga-tiga ni, mana satu yang uh, yang ada hydrogen gas? Temua chemical equation yang ketiga. So, bulatkan. Okay, so ni satu mol ni satu mol tak ada masalah. Okay, next ialah C2H2. C2H2 ni kedudukan dia kena berada di bahagian produk. Tapi, you tengok sini dia, bahagi, dia berada dekat bahagian reactant. So, Apa yang you kena buat ialah you kena switch the position. Okay. Sekarang ni, I nak you bulatkan saja you punya uh, reactant from your target thermochemical equation. You relatekan dengan thermochemical uh, equation yang diberi dalam soalan ni. Okay. Kalau carbon, you bulatkan carbon. Hydrogen, you bulatkan hydrogen. Okay. Untuk produk C2H2, you petakkan. Uh, next step yang kedua, barulah you susun-susun. Okay. Susun ketiga-tiga equation ni 
kalau boleh position dia kena according to the target thermochemical equation and also kalau boleh um, bukan kalau boleh memang kena lah um, kalau let's say kat sini 1 mol make sure 1 mol kalau kat sini 2 mol make sure 2 mol ok so sekarang first thing first ok sekarang ni if you look at you punya target thermochemical equation si 2H2 ni supposedly berada di bahagian produk but if you look at the, your thermochemical equation yang pertama ok if you look at the first thermochemical equation, you can see that situation ni berada di bagian reactant. So, what can you do is please reverse this equation. So, this equation needs to be reversed. Okay. So, bila equation ni kena reverse, jadinya daripada negatif, dia akan jadi positif. Dia punya entropy change dia. Okay. So, sekarang ni dah ngam uh, tak kedudukan situation tu. Ngam sudah ya. Sebab sekarang ni situasi tu berada di bahagian produk. Okay. Next ialah carbon. If you look at here, carbon kat sini ada 2 mol. Kat sini ada 1. So what can you do is, you can just kalikan everything by a factor of 2. Okay. So you kalikan everything by a factor of 2. Now, you tengok thermochemical equation yang kedua. Sama tak dengan... Uh, your target. Sama kan? So, kalau dah sama, okay, that's good. And then next ialah hydrogen. Tak perlu buat apa because hydrogen ni memang berada di bahagian uh, reactant. Okay? Okay, next, you need to simplify the equation. Sekarang ni, you nak kena make sure yang you ada dua carbon and then you ada uh, satu mol of hydrogen and then you kena ada uh, satu mol of C2H2 so how can you simplify this equation by cancelling out apa benda uh, yang elemen yang sama but on different side kat sini bagian reaktor ni bagian produk so you boleh cancel them out and then next H2O pula Okay, kat sini ada 1 mol of H2O tapi bagian reaktan. Kat sini 1 mol of H2O tapi bagian produk. So, you can cancel them out. And then next, you cancel out oxygen. Okay, kat sini bagian produk ni you ada 5 over 2 oxygen. Tapi bahagian reaktan ni, oxygen ni 2 campurkan dengan 1 per 2 pun dapat 5 per 2. So, they can cancel out each other. So, now next, yang tinggal... Hanyalah 2 carbon, okay, in solid phase and then 1 hydrogen gas and 1 mole of C2H2 in gas phase. So, how can you total up the enthalpy values? So, you total up kan, to find the enthalpy of formation for this thermochemical equation, you campurkan je apa yang you dah uh, buat kat sini, okay? So, you campurkan. Uh, kita ni to find the enthalpy of your target equation is going to be the summation of all the enthalpies yang you dah betulkan ni. Okay, so now you will get the uh, enthalpy of your target is positive 2 to 6.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, uh, memanglah dia bagi in kilojoules but you just letak kilojoules per mole in here. Okay, and next you boleh lah, this is optional, you boleh write down your target thermochemical equation yang dah complete, yang you dah cari ni. Okay, next, macam mana kamu nak solve Hess law by using the second solution which is energy cycle method. So, sekarang ni, uh, step 1 dengan step 2 sama je. Step 1, kamu write down your target thermochemical equation and then try to relate it by all of the equations yang dibeli dalam soalan. Okay, uh, so you kena pasti saja kedudukan of your reactant and kedudukan of your product. Once you have identified uh, which one of your reactant and product of your target thermochemical equations, that you have relatekan dengan the uh, all of the equations yang dibeli dalam soalan. And then you adjust lah. Kalau let's say macam in this case, you need to reverse so, uh, the chemical equation so that 
you akan dapat situ H2 ni dekat bahagian product. Okay. And then next, uh, yang macam ni pula. Kalau kat sini, you tengok ada satu je carbon. But then, dekat target, you ada dua carbon. So, you need to multiply everything by a factor of two. And lastly, hydrogen tak ada masalah pun. So, okay, next. Okay, step yang ketiga, you construct the energy cycle where you need to put your target equation. Target thermochemical equation mestilah. In any cycle, target mesti kena berada dekat atas sekali. Okay, so this is your target thermochemical equation. Alright, so sekarang ni, you know that uh, carbon plus kandungan 2O2, okay, plus kandungan 2O2, you akan dapat 2CO2. Uh, so, reactant ke atas, produk kat bawah tapi along the way, carbon kena campur dengan, dengan dua oksigen. So, you akan dapat dua CO2. Sebab tu, you kena tulis dekat atas anak panah macam ni, ok. Uh, you tak boleh nak menyempit kat sini juga. Apa yang penting je, uh, yang you kena letak dekat atas dengan bawah macam ni, ok. And also, enthalpy dia, enthalpy change dia for this uh, thermochemical equation. Uh, since that you need to multiply it by 2 So you just kalikan dengan 2 Letak macam ni lah And then kalau ada value Please letak value sekali terus Lagi bagus And then next in this case Hydrogen gas Bila you pluskan dengan half O2 Okay You will get H2O gas Okay in this case you tak ubah apa-apa langsung Dia punya kedudukan ke Tak perlu nak kali ke Bahagi apa-apa ke So it will just be good macam ni saja. Okay, lastly, untuk relatekan the third thermochemical equation, okay, ialah bila 2 CO2 plus kandungan H2O, you akan dapat C2H2 plus 5 over 2 oxygen. But in this case, yang enthalpy yang first ni, you need to reverse the sign. Okay, kenapa kena reversekan dia punya sign? Sebabnya, um, Kalau pada asalnya, C2H2 plus 5 over 2 O2 dapat distinct kan? Uh, tapi because you reverse, dia jadi macam ni lah. Okay, so ni macam mana cara-cara you nak construct the energy cycle. Letak your target equation here and please relatekan ketiga-tiga equation uh, in one cycle here. Okay, and just uh, bagi tahu yang mana penting saja. Uh, macam ni, apa yang penting CO2 ni. Sebab you kena relatekan. Okay, yang macam mana yang kurang penting, you boleh letak dekat sini lah. And also, please don't forget to uh, labelkan the enthalpy here. Uh, paling bagus lagi, kalau you letak, dia punya value kat sini. Okay, value of your enthalpy lagi bagus. Okay, and then next ialah step yang keempat. You just total up je enthalpy values dia. Tak perlu nak kena uh, cancel each other ke tak perlu. Uh, itu algebraic method. This is energy cycle method. Uh, so, you total up kan everything. Cuma you tahu yang this one you kena kalikan je dengan dua. H1 ni you have to bear in mind yang this enthalpy it is reverse. So, it should be in positive sign. Okay, uh, tengok ni dah positive already. Okay, and then dua kali dengan entropi yang kedua ni. And lastly, you will get the uh, entropy of formation for this thermochemical equation of your target equation is positive 2 to 6.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so memanglah dia bagi kamu few thermochemical equations but you need to label them down so that you boleh keep track. Ah, ni equation yang ke berapa, equation ke berapa. You tak perlu nak letak yang ni HC ke HN ke, tak perlu nak figure out. You just buat 1, 2, 3 je. Ah, berapa equation tu, you just label je. 1, 2, 3, something like that. Okay? Ah, so, this is uh, the additional effort lah yang you boleh buat. You tulis je balik your target thermochemical equation with the value of the enthalpy change that you have obtained from the energy cycle method. Okay, so cuba you buat soalan ni. Dia bagi tahu uh, entropies of reaction ada tiga jenis thermochemical equations and tiga jenis entropies. And dia suruh kamu cari the entropy change of the reaction between carbon and hydrogen to form ethane. That means dia suruh kamu uh, cari the enthalpy of formation of ethane, C2H4. What do I tell you if let's say you have 
more than one to more chemical equations dalam soalan ni, you kena labelkan. Okay, please labelkan all of these thermochemical equations with respect uh, to diorang punya enthalpy changes masing-masing. So, this one is going to be uh, enthalpy yang pertama, enthalpy yang kedua, this one going to be enthalpy yang ketiga. Next ialah, memang soalan tak bagi thermochemical equation for the enthalpy of formation of situation 4. So, you need to build by yourself. Okay, so how can you build it up? You tahu by definition, the enthalpy of formation ialah when heat change bila satu mol of a compound is formed from its element. So, compound tersebut ialah C2 H4 in gas phase. Okay, so what is the elements from the compound C2 H4? Carbon and hydrogen gas. Okay, next you kena balancekan dia punya chemical equation. So, uh, you ada dua carbon and empat. Hydrogen and next letaklah delta HF di hujung sekali and this is something that you need to find. Okay, so please make this as your target thermochemical equation. Next, if let's say you nak buat algebraic method ke, you nak buat energy cycle method ke, please detect your reactant and you punya product. In this case, your reactant ialah dua carbon. 2 hydrogen gas 1 mol of C2H4 So, how can you relate can from these 3 thermochemical equations? Okay, you tengok kat sini carbon Okay, baguslah kedudukan carbon ni memang dekat bahagian uh, bahagian reactor Next ialah hydrogen Okay, hydrogen ni pun berada di bahagian reactor Okay, so tak ada masalah And then, C2H4 CTH4 should be dekat product. Tapi CTH4 ni dia berada di bahagian return. So, I believe that this whole thermochemical equations needs to be reversed. Okay, and then untuk carbon pula, this whole thermochemical equation needs to multiply by 2. Okay, supaya you akan dapat 2 carbon. And then this whole thermochemical equation pun you need to multiply everything by 2. Uh, because you nak dapatkan 2 hydrogen. Next, if let's say I want to solve the Hess law by using the algebraic method, again, write down the target thermochemical equation and then uh, masukkan all of the thermochemical equations yang you dah betulkan, okay, from previous thermochemical equations, okay. And then next, you need to Simplify all of the thermochemical equation. So, uh, yang ni kat bahagian return, you ada 6F. Kat sini, you ada 6F dekat bahagian uh, product. So, they can cancel out each other. Okay, find something yang you boleh cancel out to simplify the equation until you will get the target equation. Okay. So, ni boleh cancelkan dengan this one. And lastly, memang yang tinggal hanyalah 2 carbon, 2 hydrogen and 1 mol of C2H4. Okay, so how can you find dia punya enthalpy of formation? You add up je everything. Okay, so this thing, whole thing you just sum up je. Okay. So, bila you sum up, you will get the enthalpy of formation ni ialah positive 56 kilojoules. But then, uh, this is the extra one lah. You just salin balik everything and then masukkan nilai your enthalpy of formation which is positive 56 kilojoules per mol. Okay, uh, yang ni pun per mol. Uh, you letak je per mol. In this case, you memang kena letak per mol. Okay, so I would like you to try this out uh, to test your understandings on subtopic 2.3, okay?